Ayo kejar kejar. Today's podcast, we will discuss about pregnancy pathology based on a few complications, which is pseudo pregnancy, wandering of ovum, um, ectopic pregnancy, hydramnios, and also abortus. Abortus, sorry. So before we start, let me introduce myself. My name is Mariam Shaira, who is B zero four one nine eight zero three five, and um, let me introduce you to our podcast members, which is Jessica and Zwinder. Maybe Jessica, you would like to do the honor. Yeah. Hello, everyone. My name is Lisimbe Jessica, name B zero four one nine eight zero zero one. So you can call me Jessica. And hello everyone. My name is Queen Zwinden, uh, name B zero four one nine eight zero four one, and you can call me uh, Zwinden. All right. So maybe I would I would like to call Jessica first to explain about the uh, pseudo pregnancy. Oh yes, Mary. So pseudo pregnancy which is also known as pseudocystis, can be defined as a condition that resembles pregnancy, but in the absence of a fetus incubating in the uterus and showing clinical signs typical of the peri and postpartum period of pregnancy, despite the female not being pregnant. So pseudopregnancy is a common condition in unspayed female dogs. And uh, this false pregnancy is the result of a rapid decrease in the hormone progesterone and increase in hormone prolactin. So these hormonal changes occur normally in an unspayed female dog about around six to eight weeks after she's been in heat. The most common symptoms of pseudo pregnancy in dogs are restlessness and nesting. Some will also show symptoms including anorexia and territorial aggression. Physically, dogs that are experiencing a false pregnancy go through changes to prepare for puppies to be born. And therefore, sometimes their memory glands and nipples will enlarge evenly and they may even produce some milk. Oh, okay, I see. But are there any, are there any other ways um, to treat pseudo-pregnancy in animals? Yes, uh, treatment is symptomatic and may include tranquilization to relieve anxiety and treatment with diuretics in order to reduce the milk production or to relieve fluid retention. Very understandable, Jessica. So thank you so much for explaining it further. No problem, Mary. So how about Zwinder? Would you like to elaborate more on the wandering of ovum and give us an insight about it? Yeah, sure, Jessica. Um, so uh, from what I know, the corpus luteum gravidarum can be found in one of the ovary and the embryo of fetus. And it is located in the opposite horn. And there are three possible causes that will lead to wandering of ovum. Uh, the first one is due to the ovum migrate across the peritoneal cavity and pass it down the opposite ovida, which can be known as a transperitoneal. And beside that, uh, is that the fertilized ovum could have migrated from one horn into the another horn uh, through the body of uterus, which probably uh, due to the peristaltic contraction. And it also can be stated as transuterine. And last but not least, uh, the original corpus luteum of uh, gravidarum uh, may have involuted and developed. Uh, then the matured follicle eventually ruptured and the second corpus luteum gravidarum will start to develop. And the occurrence of the corpus luteum gravidarum in the cow is about 1.5 to 2%. And that's all uh, what I have learned. Wow. And this explanation turns out to be quite interesting. Not many people know that, but now they know based on his elaboration. So Mary, I heard you have been reading about ectopic pregnancy before this. Do you mind sharing with us? 
Yes, um, Jessica. So based on based on what I read was uh, atopic pregnancy is when a fertilized egg implant implants itself um uh, outside the womb. Sorry for my mispronunciation. So um, ectopic pregnancy has variety of complications. The complications can be um graviditas ovarian where the fertilized egg cells implants on the ovary, which is very rare to occur. And secondly, the the gravitas uh, graviditas uh, tubaria where the fertilized eggs um, develop in the oviduct most interior part of reproduction which is um, the fallopian tube so third is um, graviditas vagina the fetus dies and expelled from the rituals but it remains in the vagina not until it has intercourse and lastly uh, is uh, graviditas abdominalis where the fertilized egg uh, develops in the abdominal cavity. So these last complications can lead to other to two other graviditas, which is um, primary gravitas abdominalis, where the fertilized egg is fully implanted in the abdominal cavity, and also uh, secondary gravitas abdominalis, where the fertilized egg um, is first implanted in the uterus, but then it goes up to the abdominal cavity and implanted there and to continue the rest of the growth. So this is also called as um, pseudogravitas abdominalis. And the cause of ectopic pregnancy is when a fertilized egg uh, stuck uh, on its way to the uterus, often because uh, the fallopian tube is damaged by inflammation or misshapen. So from what I know, it, it can also be caused by uterine uh, rupture. In domestic animals, such as cats and dogs, the clinical symptoms shown aren't that obvious um, and, most com and most commonly have uh, no clinical signs of illness, but it appears to have systemic um, inflammatory response, no um, loss of appetite and apathy. So meanwhile in farm animals, pregnancies, um, sorry, meanwhile in uh, farm animals, when we do palpation, there's abdominal uh, distension. So the only solution for atopic pregnancy in animals is by surgical removal, either with or without uh, ovarian hysterectomy. And this is um, maybe due to the fact that mo in most cases, diagnosis tend to be accidental or, necro or a necropsy finding. So I think let's not waste any time. Maybe anyone can explain and elaborate more on the last topic, which is, um, I mean, the last two topics, which is um, hydram uh, neos and also abortus. Maybe Jessica, you would like to explain more? Yes, I think I can do that. So hydram neos is actually a disease that occurs in cattle and is characterized by gradual accumulation of excessive amniotic fluid with progressive abdominal enlargement in the den during the last trimester of pregnancy. So this is caused by bleeding and obstruction of blood vessels, resulting in transudation and collection of fluid in the allantochorion. The abdomen can be like so enlarged that it can be confused with the diagnosis of in the indigestion, bloat or traumatic gastritis. The clinical sign is actually normally the enlarged abdomen, but with a normal body temperature. Hydramnios happens most commonly in cattle, but uh, very rarely in sheep, pigs, and carnivores. This can be treated through the drainage of excess amniotic fluid. And amniocentesis is used to drain excess amniotic fluid from the uterus. This procedure, however, carries a small risk of complications, including preterm labor, placental abruption, and premature rupture of the membranes. Very interesting. And I think we already reached the last topic. Andy, would you like to elaborate more on that? Yeah, I would like to add on about the abortus. And so the abortus can be known as an abortion, which is the expulsion from the uterus of a living fetus. Uh, before it reach uh, a viable age or the expulsion of a dead fetus of a recognizable size as at any stage of pregnancy. Um, for the percentage of abortion, it occurs in the population is about 2 to 5 percent and is considered as serious case. So if the fetus dead in 24 to 72 hours, 
the fetus will eventually decompose or autolysis in the uterus. If the fetus dead in if the abortion occurs less than five months and it's seldom followed by retention of the placenta. However, if the abortion occur more, occur more than five months, it is characterized by retention of the placenta. And there are several non-infectious diseases that lead to abortion, which included genetic aberration like chromosome abnormalities, phototetratogen, or due to in, uh, the animal ingested toxic plants, uh, which result in nitrate poisoning, as well as deficiency of nutrition, such as iodine deficiency or vitamin A deficiency. And the excess amount of certain nutrition like lead poisoning or cadmium poisoning. And so beside that, uh, stress is also one of the factors which may cause by uh, handling of animal trauma, surgery, and the anxiety. And all of this will affect the stress level of the animal. And moreover, uh, miscellaneous uh, like multi-pregnancy, insemination, prostaglandin, therapy, allergy, or dehydration also will lead to abortion. So for the bacterial disease like brucellosis in cow, which caused by the brucella abortus bank will result in abortion in the third trimester, which is around six to nine months, and cause the necrotic of placenta. And the cow may be infected by ingested organism from aborted fetus, uterine discharge, or feed and water, which which is contaminated. Uh, this uh, can be controlled by giving vaccination with Procella stain 19 in female between three to seven months or quarantine the infected individuals for, uh, for four weeks. Uh, for the cattle which is infected, uh, the most affected cattle may abort one or twice and they may have a period of infertility and then recover and can continue to produce calf normally. So, uh, and for the virus disease like infectious bovine rhinotracheitis and infectious pustular valvo vaginitis, which caused by virus herpes, uh, will lead to 10 to 100% of morbidity and less than 10% of mortality. And that's all uh, I want to add on. Thank you so much, Andy. Um, well, there's a lot of elaboration based on abortus and it's very informative. Thank you. And I hope that um, we can create this podcast so that people will know um, more about this uh, pathological pregnancy. So thank you so much, Swindern and Jessica for joining our podcast today. Thank you, Mary and Swindern. That was a very great discussion. I really enjoyed it and learned a lot. Thank you all. Thank you. All right. See you in the next podcast then. See you.